And welcome to Home with Sarah Jane. Today I wanted to share one of my favorite bread recipes with you and this is how to make your own homemade French bread. So if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Sarah and I'm a homeschooling mom to two girls ages 10 and 14. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for stopping by once again. I do really appreciate you. So French bread. During our no spend month, I was... I gave myself limits and I told myself I wasn't going to be buying bread because I know how to make it. Well, during that month, I stumbled across a new French bread recipe, which is the one I'm going to be sharing with you today. And we just fell in love with it. And it was super simple to make. It makes two loaves. So I do feel like it's like a good amount of bread as well for the time that it, it does take. Um, but it is very simple. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how I use this French bread recipe to make homemade croutons and also how to make this into freezable garlic bread. So let's just get started with making the, the French bread first. So this bread recipe takes very simple ingredients. All you need is some all-purpose flour. You can also use bread flour if you like. I've done that before and it came out great. You need white sugar, yeast. I'm using instant yeast or rapid yeast. And then this is salt and just some oil. I prefer to use um, extra virgin olive oil in this bread, but I have used vegetable oil and canola oil as well. And they both came out just fine. I just prefer the extra virgin olive oil. And then you just need some water. So this is a very simple recipe. Okay, so I have made this recipe with my KitchenAid mixer and without. Obviously, it's easier to make it with your KitchenAid mixer, but you can do this recipe without it. You just need to knead the dough. So I'm gonna start off by adding in two and one fourth cup of warm water now warm water is very important here so just make sure it's nice and warm and then I'm also going to be adding one tablespoon uh oh do I have enough yes I do one tablespoon of this instant yeast and then to that I'm also going to be adding two tablespoons of sugar whoa I almost added flour <laughs> Not yet. Okay. And since I'm using instant yeast, I could go ahead and just keep on adding in the ingredients. I do not have to wait, which is one of the things that I like about using instant yeast. So I'm just going to keep on going. So to this, I am going to add the salt. Now, I like to add two and one fourth teaspoon of salt this is more kind of based on what you prefer you don't have to add this much salt if you don't want to and then i'm going to add two tablespoons of oil again i'm using extra virgin olive oil whoa i'm saying that weird i'm using extra virgin olive oil i just prefer the olive oil uh, flavor more so there's two tablespoons of that and now I'm going to add in the flour. So this recipe calls for about five and a half to six cups of flour. Again, I'm using all purpose flour, but like I said earlier, I have used bread flour in this recipe and it comes out really, really well. So either one, all purpose or bread flour. And I'm going to use five and a half to six cups of this. So as you can see, this dough is still very sticky. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on adding flour.
Okay, so once you see the dough starting to kind of like clean the side of the bowl, that's when it's ready and you can see it's not too sticky, it's nice and soft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on my board. And I'm gonna knead it just a few times by hand. Again, this is a very, very simple recipe. Oops, I think I hit the camera, sorry. Keep on hitting the camera. <laughs> there we go. I should have put a towel. I should have put a towel underneath my cutting board. It keeps sliding. Okay. So now that that is nice and soft, and you can see it's not really sticky, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a greased bowl. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this in a cool dry place. I usually like to just, you know, leave it in my oven like I was saying earlier. And again, I'm gonna let this rise for about an hour. Um, and well, if it takes a little bit longer than an hour, it's fine. Just look for it to double in size. So here's the dough really after an hour, it did double in size. So now all I'm gonna do is add some flour to my cutting board. You know what, I better add a towel underneath this. There we go. So I do have a parchment lined baking sheet ready to go. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this dough and I'm gonna cut it in half because this does make two loaves of French bread. So now all you do is you roll this out into like a rectangle. Okay, so it's nice and flat. Now I'm just gonna take it long side first and I'm going to roll it. And as I roll it, I'm gonna try and push out any air that is inside the dough. And then as I get to the end, I'm just gonna tuck in the ends and then continue to roll it. Kind of like a burrito. And I'm just gonna place this on the parchment lined baking sheet. And now I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the other half of the dough. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the top just in like a little pattern. So it looks like the loaves that you get at the, the grocery store. Okay, so now that that's all done, I'm just going to put this in my oven and just I'm gonna let it sit and rise for about another hour and then I'll show you what it looks like before I cook it. Okay, so here it is after the second rise. Now all I have to do is bake it. So I am gonna go ahead and uh, preheat the oven to 400 degrees, and I'm gonna bake this for 25 to 30 minutes, or until it's nice and golden. Okay, so here they are, straight from the oven. And what I like to do is I just like to take some butter, and when they're still hot, I rub the butter on top of the bread, and this will give it a softer crust. If you want a more crusty bread, then you wouldn't add the butter to the top of it. But I think the butter makes it look pretty. And once they're cool, I'll show you with one of these loaves how to make freezable garlic bread and some croutons. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you two more recipes to make using this French bread recipe. The first one I'm gonna show you is for croutons. I'm gonna cut this loaf in half and I'm gonna do half of this for croutons. 
And all you need for the crouton recipe is olive oil, garlic salt, oregano, and butter. I like to use unsalted butter for this recipe because I am using garlic salt. So let's get started. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice this bread up into little cubes, or you could just tear it apart. It really doesn't matter. Normally when I make this crouton recipe, it's made with bread that's been sitting out or bread that I need to use up so it's a little more crusty. This bread is actually pretty fresh because I just made it, so it's kind of hard to cut it. I did already preheat my oven to 350 degrees so that as soon as I'm done getting these ready, I could pop them straight into the oven. So I only need two tablespoons of this unsalted butter and I need this melted, so I'm gonna melt this up really quick. Okay, so to the two tablespoons of melted butter, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then I am also going to add a half a teaspoon of oregano. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one, whoops. It'll work. Half a teaspoon of oregano and half a teaspoon of garlic salt. And I, again, I'm using unsalted butter so that it's not too salty when since I'm using garlic salt. And then I'm just gonna stir this up and pour it over the breadcrumbs. And that's it, all you have to do is bake them now. So these bake for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. And I like to bake them on a, like either parchment or silicone mat lined baking sheet. Okay, so here are the croutons all done. These are so good. I'm not even gonna like try and put them in a container. I'm just gonna put them in a bowl because my kids will eat all of these today. Okay, so for this last recipe, I'm just gonna be using the rest of this loaf I already cut up um, for the croutons with some butter and some fresh garlic. This is the freezable garlic bread and it's so simple, you don't even need a recipe for it. But all I'm doing is I'm gonna slice this bread and this can be as thin or as thick as you like. This is another recipe that I like to use, or not even really a recipe, but this is another uh, thing that I like to do with this French bread. If I have too much bread, and I'm afraid that we're not gonna get through it in time, I do like to turn it into something useful that I can you know, freeze and use later. So this bread does come in handy. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to soften a little bit of butter and I'm gonna mix it with some fresh garlic. Now you can use garlic salt in this recipe. We just prefer fresh garlic, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. Or you can even use both. It really doesn't matter, it's all which you like. I'm gonna use probably four cloves today. This isn't too much bread, but we really like garlic. Another really good idea for this bread would be to do like a roasted garlic butter as well, where you could just cook up the garlic or roast the garlic in the oven first, and it gives it some great flavor. But I'm going for something simple and easy, so that's why I'm doing it this way. And I'm actually just gonna mix this together in the same container I used for the croutons. And that's it for the garlic butter. And all I'm gonna do is put a good amount on each slice of bread. Okay, so now that these have the butter 
garlic mixture, the garlic butter on here. All I'm gonna do is put these on a baking sheet and freeze them. So you just wanna freeze them a little bit before you add them into your um, bag to store them in the freezer, just so that they don't stick together. Okay, so these have been in the freezer for about 20 minutes and they're nice and ready to be bagged up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the instructions on how to bake these from the oven. I usually bake them at 425 degrees for about five to seven minutes. You just kind of want to keep an eye on them. Hug the air out. So now I have garlic bread that's already prepped and ready that all I have to do is pull it out of the freezer when I need it and bake them up. So that is it. Homemade French bread, croutons, and freezable garlic bread. I did want to mention that this French bread recipe does make really good bread bowls for soup as well. I will insert a picture so you can see. I have made bread bowls using this French bread recipe and they came out fantastic. So if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. Thank you so much for stopping by. You have a great day. Bye.